Hey everybody, welcome to Take Heart Today. We've been doing, um, in the Take Hearts I've been doing, a little series on the Gospels and just seeing the way they introduce us to the person of Jesus. It's a bit like each of the Gospel writers are film directors and they want us to see a particular angle of the same Jesus, depending on who's doing the writing. And Luke's introduction to Jesus gives us this wonderful picture of who it is we're going to meet. So I love the way that Luke's gospel starts. It's like the curtain rolls back and the opening scene of the film is in the temple. And there's Zachariah in the temple, who's a priest, kind of doing his priesty stuff uh, uh, in there. And then Gabriel, the angel, appears next to him and says, hey, I know you're really old, but you're gonna have a baby and it's gonna be John the Baptist. And um, Zachariah doesn't believe him, so. <laughs> This is what happens, uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 18. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. Put another way, how can I be sure of this? I'm really old and have you seen my wife? <laughs> and I love Gabriel's response, he says, I am Gabriel. How can I be sure of this? Because I am the angel flipping Gabriel, you moron. And Zacharias is then struck dumb. He's not allowed to speak until, uh, until John the Baptist ends up being born. Anyway, then the scene changes and we come to Mary. Gabriel again sort of appears to Mary and says, hey, you're gonna give birth to the Son of God. Mary's response very different. She says, great, may it be to me as you have said. But one of the things about Mary is she was a teenage, a young teenage peasant girl. In other words, she had nothing at all. And the, the evidence of that is that when Jesus is ultimately born, as we know, she can't even find him a room in an inn. He ends up being born in a stable. It's only this gospel that gives us that little detail that Jesus was laid as a baby in a manger, a feeding trough for animals. Mary gave Jesus the best she could, like any mother would want to. And the best Mary could do was a trough for animal feeding. Then uh, the other kind of big characters at the opening scene of this particular movie of the life of Jesus are the shepherds. The shepherds, I love them because they're, they're just down the road from where this is all happening and they've got no idea what is going on. If we were to flick back to Matthew's version of the film, we see the wise men traveling for hundreds of miles, you know, following a star because they, they get a sense that God is on the move, but not so with the shepherds. They're two minutes down the road, under the stars, they're night watch shepherds, no clue that anything's happening. And God sends a choir of angels, and it's only when the choir of angels turn up, they finally, the penny drops, oh, I think there's something going on here. We better go and see. And so who do we meet in the opening scene of this gospel? We meet Zechariah, who doesn't believe anything, Mary, who doesn't have anything, and the shepherds who don't know anything. Here's one of the things that I think Luke is trying to get us to see. Jesus is the gift to them. He's the gift to them. And what I love about these stories is that there's no point where you see God changing his mind, second guessing himself. You know, when Zachariah doesn't believe it, they just, you know, the story carries on. When Mary puts Jesus in a manger, it's not that at that point the Son of God decides he'd rather be born in a palace, he's there in the manger. Um, you know, God doesn't change his mind even as he watches the shepherds kind of sitting there under the stars not having a clue as to what was going on. He knows that they're ignorant. He knows that uh, they struggle with doubt. He knows they don't have anything that's worthy to give him. And he still gives himself he still gives Jesus his very heart to them. What does this say to us? What it says to us is that Jesus is also the gift to us. He's the gift to you and me. Really practically, one of the things that means is God doesn't change his mind with us either. You know, when he sees my failures, and there's a lot more than I'd like to admit, when he sees the mess I can make and the things that I miss sometimes. That, that's not a surprise to him, he's not shocked by that. And still he gives himself to me, he's, he's the blessing to me. 
Um, the gospel is this weird mixture of something that's incredibly humbling and incredibly affirming. Think about it like this. A friend of mine, years ago, told me about how she had been proposed to in a restaurant in Paris once. She's a lot older than I am, and she said it was way back when. Um, but uh, some guy that she didn't really know very well, he was like a friend of her brother's, took her out for a nice meal in Paris, got down on one knee during the meal, and just popped the question to her. And she, of course, said no, because she didn't know him. <laughs> but she said it was incredibly flattering. But actually, on reflection, she said it wasn't anywhere near as meaningful as when her now husband eventually asked her to marry him. Because the difference was, this first guy had this idea of what she was like, but he didn't really know. The husband, however, by the time he popped the question, they'd been in a relationship, um, they knew each other's flaws, they knew each other's failures, and he still said, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. God knows our flaws. He knows our failures. There is no point putting a filter on or trying to impress him because he sees right through it. And yet, and that's humbling. You know, the, the gospel basically says, you're such a mess <laughs> that it takes nothing less than the Son of God to come and to save you. That's what it says. You've got no chance of saving yourself, so God's going to have to intervene and save you. So it's humbling. He sees our mess, but it is so incredibly affirming because it says, and he loves you enough, knowing all of your flaws, he loves you enough to choose to do that. This is the Jesus that we follow. I love him so much.